Hey everyone, Josh here from Fresh Start Customs, and today we're going to be going over rearranging colors in your design for Glowforge to read them differently. So this will help with your engraving speeds and different projects depending on what you're doing. So I'm going to go over score lines, cut lines, and engraves for text here. So we're going to go ahead and get into this. So first off, I'm going to just throw down two rectangles really quick. I'm not going to actually title it out. I'll just hold shift so we know it's square. There we go. So that's our first one. I have red selected for that. There we go. Okay, I got red selected for that. And um, that's going to be our cut. This is going to be our outer cut here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select another rectangle. We're going to go in the center here and just hold shift, make it square. Like I said, I don't care what size it is for this, just because I want to show you guys what I'm doing. Then I'm going to change this to light blue. I always make my scores light blue. You can do it any color that you want. Um, and then I'm going to just center this here. That way we can see what's going on here. So um, I got that centered. And to do that one more time, if I went too fast, I went over here to the Align tab and click Center here and Center here on the right-hand side. If you don't have that tab, you can go to Window and then click on Align and you'll get that tab there. Uh, so, I know I'm going a little bit fast here, but I'll slow down and repeat anything that I have to, just like I did there. So the next thing is going to be your text. We're going to just type in some text here. Um, let's just put FSC rocks on there. And then we'll blow this up here by highlighting it. And then coming over to your text, and you can make it as big or small as you want. I'm going to make it this size. And then for everybody in the Glowforge user group, we're going to go ahead and the GUG rocks as well. There we go. Just so we have an idea of what's going on here. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, now that I have my text typed out, if you save the file just like this, it's going to take this text and get rid of it because Glowforge can't see text just by itself as of yet. I think they're working on fixing that. Um, so when you have the text typed out like you want it, you'll highlight your text and then you'll come up to type and then go down to create outlines. And then as you can see now, it's all selected and it's, it's an actual vector file here where it can read just like a, a vector image. Um, and then you see how this box is a little bit bigger and you can still edit it when you click in there. And then you can't edit this one. So that's what we're going for. After you get everything all said and done, just go up to type and change that to create outlines. And there you go. So those are good to engrave. This would engrave just like it is if you wanted to. But let's go over a couple things here. I'm going to copy these a couple times, and then I'll show you different functions here on um, how you could speed up the engravings and different things like that. So, for example, we'll just go with this. Let's see here. I'm going to just bring this to the bottom because this will be my example of just solid black here. And then, for example, we're going to stagger these two right here, and I'll put those right there in the center, and then I'm going to stagger in the opposite way, kind of like that, for this. So, for this example, just, just to be safe, I'm going to actually make these a little bit longer, just to show you how much time you could technically save by doing this here. So let's say your sign is going to be this long, and I'll just realign those really quick, just because it bugs me when it's not centered. And then we're going to move this way down here where it's staggered still, so the top of this will hit the bottom of this, and then this over here where the bottom of this is going to hit over here, just as an example. And then this one's going to be dead even with this one, and just to be safe. I'm going to align that. There we go. So, now if you would put this in the Glowforge, what it's going to do 
um, it'll it'll read by color. So like I said, anything that's black here, that's a vector, is going to engrave all as one image here. That's what Blowforge usually does whenever this happens. Um, and then you can change, um, since you have the different color score line, you can change it to be score, and then the red is your cut line. But what you can do to help speed this up a little bit is you can actually change the colors of your text here. So I'm going to make this one green, and this one, uh, no, I already got red, so we're going to make that one pink. This one we're going to make yellow. Oops. See, you want to make sure you grab the right thing. I accidentally grabbed the stroke there. You want to grab the fill only. There we go. And then this one we're going to make, let's see, make that dark blue. Whoops, see, I did the stroke again. Not paying attention to what I'm doing here. There we go, dark blue. So now the Glowforge has multiple operations. It has like seven different operations here. The red is one, blue is another, green, pink, yellow, blue, black. So this will do all the different operations in separate engravings. So technically, now the black is going to engrave all the way across back and forth. That's how, how I mean by that's going to take so much time if you had all the solid black. So this one's going to go all the way back and forth until it has all the black done. Then it'll move to like yellow and then it can go like this really quickly and then it goes like this really quickly and so on and so forth. So um, let me go ahead, I'll save this um, to as a design here just so you can see what I mean and we'll go from there. So let me save this here and then I'll see you in the Glowforge UI here. Alright everyone, so as you can see I've got it pulled up here in the Glowforge UI. Um, so and UI stands for user interface just in case you're wondering what my acronyms are here. Obviously I didn't align any of these just because I just want to do this as a quick example here. Um, so if you remember these two down here are black images here for the text and if you hover over this after you have your material selected, I just selected a random one here, um, you can see those two down here light up Anytime I touch that, that means they're going to engrave together. Just like I said, it's going to go all the way across. And then this entire gap that it has to travel across, that could take a couple seconds each time all the way up to the top. That could save you a good two minutes worth of engrave time just for taking the difference of this blank. So that way it would engrave just one section at a time. So it doesn't have to travel back and forth. 17 or 18 times however long it takes and then as you can see this next one is up here and then it kind of jumps down there and obviously you don't want it to go from there to there so you find the next one that you want if you wanted to go across you could do this one next but I think the best thing would be going through doing this one then this one then this one this one so we're gonna find this one here and then we're gonna drag it up here so now it's going to do that black, and then it's going to do that top one on the left, then the middle one on the left, and then I'm going to drag this down. Whoops. There we go. Oh, I think it moved, actually. There we go. So now that I have them all in a row, now it's going to do that top right and then the top left there. So you can see how it'll do each one by itself and then that'll be quicker than actually doing both together when it has this huge space ag across it. Now it'd be a different story let's say this one and this one are right next to each other on the same line then obviously you'd want that to be the same color so um, for example let me flip back over here so if these were like this you would want this to be the same color just like it is now the reason being is it's close together and it doesn't have to travel this entire white gap here. It can just engrave back and forth on all this and get it done quicker. So same example there, like if you would have this here and this here. There we go. So now um, you can change, technically you could change all this to black if you wanted to. Um, minus the lines here. Let me change that to black and explain how that would work here. 
So if it's all black, it's going to do um, all the black together. So it'll start down at the bottom, and then since this is all white, it's just going to skip over that and then go to the next black section here. And then it'll do this, and then it'll skip over that, and then it'll do this all in one process. Um, <clears throat> like I said, that's that's going to be your quickest way to set up. I just wanted to show you guys different ways to do that. But let's say this one was up here, and you see how they're off-center. It's like in the middle of this text right here. Um, and there's a giant blank space here. So what it'll do, it'll start over here on this text, and then it'll get about halfway, and then it's going to go all the way across, hit this one, and then go all the way across, hit this one, and back and forth until this one's done, and then it'll continue from here. So that's why if it's something like this where it's staggered, or you have different images that just don't meet up, um, then what you'd want to do is change the color of this one to like let's say green that way this one can do its own thing by itself and then it can go to black and it'll start all the way down here do this by itself skip to this one by itself and skip to this one by itself so uh, that will help you guys out a lot and then let me jump back over to the glowforge ui and if you've never seen a, a file with this many designs before you have this little scroll wheel right here you're gonna have to scroll down to see your score and cut line and you can make, um, you see how the blue line that I made was the score line. You're going to have to change that by clicking score. But it lets you do two different operations. So now it's score and cut based on you changing that color. So there you guys have it. This is exactly how you're going to want to set up your files to save yourself some engraving time, save a lot of headaches, and it comes in useful for other events too. And uh, we'll dive into that later down the road. So I hope this uh, video helped you guys out, and we'll catch you guys next time.